All right, so you've received your first kit. Once you get it out of the box, it should look something like what we have laid out here. And once you've finished building, this is what we're gonna build. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is start with the circuit board itself. And we're gonna start to populate all of the through hole components on the circuit board. When you get your board, you might want to look at it. There's a little clue on the back for a pretty cool scavenger hunt. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But we'll start by, like I said, with all the electro electrical components. So we'll dump them all out, move everything else off to the side, and we'll get started. One quick note for anyone who ordered a kit from us without an Arduino or Arduino compatible board, the boards that we shipped include little standoffs. If yours doesn't, you can get these at any hardware store and we have a link in the description on where you can purchase those. So let's start soldering. We're gonna take all of these electrical components here, which are basically the connectors that go through the board. And we're gonna start by soldering all of those. You'll find the, these connectors here are the through hole stackable headers for the Arduino. And we'll start by sticking all of these components through the holes of the Arduino shield. Like this. And then we'll go ahead and start soldering by flipping it over, using our fingers to keep those through the holes. And we get to start soldering. So grab your soldering iron, keep in mind that all of the metal part of the soldering iron is hot. So you wanna only hold it by this part. Hold it like a pencil. In general, when you solder, you're gonna hold the soldering iron onto the pad, touching the connector and the pad on the PCB. You wanna hold it there for about two seconds and then you'll start to push solder into it. So grab your soldering iron, grab your solder and place the soldering iron on the pad push the solder into the pad and the solder should start to flow as you push it. And we've just created our first solder joint. This part gets a little bit repetitive one, one thing to note is you want to uh, make sure that the position of these components, your through hole components are square to the board. So I like to start by putting solder on only one of the joints for each of the connectors, just to make sure that I have it lined up square. So I'm gonna do that first. So I'll go around to each of the connectors placing solder. You want to clean your soldering iron off relatively frequently to make sure that you're not getting solder all over your board. All right, now all of these components are tacked into place with one joint soldered. And we're going to go ahead and do all of the other components, through hole components that need to be soldered onto this board. These connectors, the green ones, are able to fit together like so. I like to push them all together so that they form one unit and can then be placed into the board. You want the uh, silver part there you, you want the silver part where the wires can enter through the board to be exposed. Flip them over and go ahead and solder those into place as well. These pads are much bigger, so you, it may take a little bit longer for the pad itself to heat up, but it should be a little bit easier to solder since you have more clearance.
Now comes these four pieces, the remaining four pieces to be soldered. You may want to do two of them at once like this. It's kind of hard to keep them in place. One thing that can help is using a piece of tape to tape them to the board so that when you flip it over, you don't, you don't have to worry about holding them in place. So you can see that these components are not at all square to the board. I just wanted to tack them in place so that I can hold the board upright, lift, heat the solder joint from the bottom, and then once the solder starts to flow freely, the component will just fall into place. It may need to take a little bit of pressure, but it should hopefully just fall into place. All right, do the, do the same with the remaining two components. Just tack it into place very quickly. And then once we get everything tacked to the board, we can go through and finish all the solder joints. So. Now you can do a quick now you can do a quick visual inspection to make sure that everything is square to the board, everything's straight. And now that everything is tacked into place, we can go through and finish all of these solder joints. After you finish soldering all of the pieces into place, you want to look through very quickly and make sure there are no solder bridges. A solder bridge is wherever two pins have solder touching both of one or more pins, or two or more pins rather. So you want to look through very quickly, make sure that there's no solder bridges that will cause a short and once you've done that, you're ready to continue building the mechanical part of the Wi-Fi robot. First, we're going to take the motors, C1, 
seen here, and we need to solder some wires to the leads of the motors. So in order to solder the wires onto the motors, you're gonna need your wire cutters and the wire itself. You wanna separate out all the wires. And grab the pieces that you need, which will be the white and black wires. Can't believe they're twisted together like this. So you're going to strip the ends of the wire. And place the wires through the leads of the motor on both sides. And I like to fold the wire over just to make a secure connection for when I start to solder it. I just do that with my hands, but you can also use the end of the wire cutters to grip onto it. You want to place the motor flat on the desk so you have access to get your soldering iron into place. Grab the solder, the soldering iron, and place solder onto the joint. Once the wire is soldered into place, you want to make sure that you give it a little bit of flexibility to run and not rip this copper piece off of the motor. Do that with both motors. <clears throat> Once you've so soldered the wires onto the motors, you ready for mechanical assembly? For the mechanical assembly, grab the bag of the woodcut pieces and the bolts and nuts and your wooden platform, as well as your Arduino and a screwdriver. Start the mechanical assembly. First thing we're gonna do is mount the Arduino or the Arduino compatible board onto the Wi-Fi bot platform. Take the standoffs and the bolts and get started. Make sure all of the bolts connecting the standoffs are nice and tight, and then start to screw the Arduino into place. Next, you're going to grab the motor mounts, which are these wooden pieces here, and mount the motors onto the Wi-Fi robot. You want to route the wires so that they are now not in the way of anything. 
And the way that the motor mounts mount onto this platform itself is like so. Just kind of push it in here and then push the platform back. It may take a little bit of force, but don't force it too much. You don't want anything to break. All the motors, or each of the motors has a little nub that sticks out that goes into the motor mount like that. And then you want to stick the screws facing out and tighten the bolts into place with your fingers. Make sure that the motor itself is facing outwards. Crap. So once you have the motor mounted onto the motor mount, you want the this part of the motor facing towards the front of the platform, where it says thimble is the front. So you may have to switch sides of the motor mounts to make sure that it fits into place. All right, at this point, we're ready to take our assembled PCB and mount this shield onto the Arduino. When you're placing this, it can be a little bit tedious. These pins uh, that go through the shield, you want to line up one side so it goes into the sockets and then slowly line up the other and look for any pins that aren't aligned into the sockets. Push them into place with your finger and then start to apply slightly more pressure to push all of the pins into place.
Once you've pushed the PCB shield into place, we're ready to place the wheels onto the Arduino. These are press fit wheels. You just line the slot up with the mount on the motor and press it on to the robot. You want to make sure that the wires coming from the motor are out of the way of the wheels. You can see here they aren't, so you want to wrap them around and out of the way. Do the same on the other side. Now it's starting to look a little bit more complete. So mechanically there's only a couple more components left. We want to secure the battery pack onto the robot. We're going to use Velcro to do that. And we want to secure this caster onto the front of the robot. To do that we're going to use hot glue. To secure the battery pack, we're going to use Velcro. So just peel the back off of the Velcro and place it onto the battery pack. You might want to rip the, back, the Velcro apart, place one side onto the battery pack and one side onto the robot. As far as orienting the battery pack itself, you want to make sure that the wires are facing the, towards the back of the robot. And then just place the Velcro in the middle of the battery pack. Peel the tape off. Place this piece onto the robot itself. And now you're ready to secure the battery pack. Place the caster in the middle in the front of the robot and use the hot glue gun to glue it into place. When you're using the hot glue gun, you want to make sure that you don't, uh, well, burn yourself obviously, but also don't get glue into the bearings on this caster. So just use enough to secure the caster into place and try and avoid using too much, otherwise it will get into the bearings and affect the ability of the caster to rotate. Once you're done with the hot glue gun, place it off to turn it off and place it off to the side. And then try and clean up all of your mess of glue strands. Now you have the robot almost completely assembled. We just need to make a few more electrical connections. So We'll start by stripping, these are the wires coming from the battery holder. We'll start by taking these wires, stripping them off a little bit. A little bit more. And we're going to place the red wire from the battery pack into the VN plus on the Arduino shield or the thimble shield. So you want to go through and just loosen up all of these connections or connectors. You want to go through and loosen up all of these connectors with the screwdriver so you can insert the wires and then tighten them down. Again, the red wire goes into the VN plus. 
the red wire goes into the VN plus. You want to make sure that the, it's electrically connected and then just tighten the connector to secure it into place. Grab your wire strippers, strip the black side of the battery connector and stick that into the VN minus and then tighten that into place. Now your Wi-Fi robot has power. We just need to get that power to the motors. We gave you quite a bit of wire and you can actually trim that wire yourself. So we're just going to make sure that the wire again is out of the way of the motors and give yourself enough length to run to the motor itself. Cut the wire with your wire cutters, strip it, and then secure that into place on the shield. And tighten it down. And do the same with the other motor. Then you get to clean up your work area and marvel at what you've done. So this is the fully assembled Wi-Fi robot. The only thing missing is this little Wi-Fi module. You place that into place. On the top of the shield. And now you're ready to program your Wi-Fi robot and see what you can do with it. All right, now, now that you have the Wi-Fi robot completely assembled, you might notice there's a couple of components in the kit that you didn't use. These are your rotary encoders. These, well, okay. These are the rotary encoder disks. These two are what make the rotary encoder disks readable by the Arduino itself. And this, is the ultrasonic module, which you can think of as the eyes and really the ears of the robot. The rotary encoders are used to track the amount of distance that the robot has traveled. And this is your first challenge for your first thimble kit is to figure out how to mount these wheels onto the robot, how to connect them with these encoders optical sensors, and then how to write the software to read these rotary encoders so that the robot can stay straight and measure the distance that it's traveled. Now that you've built your Wi-Fi robot kit, you've gone through the tutorial, you've written your code, you even programmed your phone so you can control it, you're ready to have fun. Thanks for watching.